Hey, I'm Monty from Client Liaison, and I'm here chatting with Milky. Firstly, like, congratulations on the new album. Like, I'm just going to put it out there. I think it's one of the best albums of the year, personally. Oh, that's yeah. nice. It's like such a fun and energetic record with kind of like so much nostalgia and sonically like quite like a perfect record that matches a conceptual nature. Um, and like it opens with that kind of cult-like welcome message. But the main thread that kind of runs through it is the joining of the body and the soul to create the ultimate like human experience, I guess. What kind of prompted you guys to take on that more like conceptual nature to creating a record? I, I find it easier to write within those limitations. And um, we, we, um, we create worlds. We, you know, we like work as theatre. So having a framework is, is a lot easier to create, you know, to create yeah, that exactly. detail and know what detail you're going to create. It just, it kind of came together fortuitously that, um, that we had a, we, we wrote House of Holy with Nick Littlemore in LA uh, in, 2019 and then after that it we looked around and we had a lot of songs that you know suited this theme and then there were some unfinished ones and then we wrote some new ones um but yeah it's it's a nice like grand universal concept that can include lots of different yeah moods and different concepts and it also reappropriates some songs like elevator up Mm -hmm. you know and then we do a video on it and it has some kind of sin or salvation element to yeah, it you know, yeah an element of purgatory and hell yeah uh, so it's kind of yeah it strengthens the world mm -hmm. hopefully yeah yeah the visuals are awesome like we'll get into that a bit later but love the visuals i mean from the get-go with like club called heaven the record is kind of like i mean i've I feel like there's so many kind of like influences that stem from like in excess with kind of like the like 80s rock and like groovy threads of like new wave dance rock, but also then like Champagne Affection, there's so much like kind of like George Michael vibes, like at least I get. Um, so how do you guys kind of like go about crafting the record sonically, like leaning into your own influences, but ultimately creating a record that, whilst it does feel nostalgic, still kind of fits within contemporary music, which is like quite a tricky thing to do. Yeah, I mean, it, there's multiple methods. Um, often it's Harvey will start with a beat himself. Um, I know that sometimes he's, he tries to replicate certain songs that he's into it at the time, and it ends up sounding nothing like that. And, and we don't even know most of the time what they are. Uh, he doesn't tell me necessarily, but then um, a lot there was a lot of collaboration involved in this record. So we'd often start with one of Harvey's beats and then we'd try to write a song around it. But um, towards the end, there were more so vocals that I'd created and that we'd write production around it. So we're often to a brief, you know, it's, it's quite, a, you know, at the start, we were just making songs every day and we were looking at references like um, Space Jam, where they mix cartoons and, uh, and, you know, real life in real life footage together. You know, that kind of aesthetic, um, you know, that was like an influence for Strictly Business. Um, and then that mixed with Huey Lewis and the News, for example, like we would just, and we'd often throw around multiple references of which I can't even remember. Um, but towards the end, we were really working towards the brief of the concept of the album and trying to hit different moods. So something like Eulogy for the Living was, it was really about what the song required. And so it's been five years since uh, the rest of your debut, Diplomatic Immunity. So that's like quite a massive time period of your life, which I guess you've also spent like touring and going around the world. Um, how did that kind of time working, that, that time between your debut and the um, and Divine Intervention kind of influence how you approached creating this new record? Like, was there anything new that you guys implemented when compared to Diplomatic Immunity? It was definitely a lot more collaboration. Um, towards the end of Diplomatic Immunity, we used collaboration to almost get a, get the album across the line because, um, you know, we both work in different ways and we both, you know, might like some things more than others and, you know, you can get caught up in your own head. So using, you know, uh, collaborators as in inspiration to write new things is really important for that album. So we just, we started this album by working with Dan Hume in Byron Bay. And we spent, we'd spend a week there and then we'd come back a couple of weeks later and we just try to write a song a day. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot's happened in the space of four years, you know, personally, 
business wise, um, as a band, our audience has grown, our audience has aged in some way. But we hope that's not important. It's not about us, you know, it's not about, it's not, you know, it's even not so much about the world around us in a way, you know. We, we like that Client Liaison can exist in a bubble and it is a piece of theater, it's a piece of art and you can interpret it as you will, but um, hopefully you get lost within it and you lose yourself. Yeah, and so, I mean, I know you guys started working on the record in 2019 and obviously like the world went through so much last year. Um, but when you were kind of like getting towards the end of the record, because that was during the pandemic, correct? Uh, we started way before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we, we, we um, before the pandemic came, it was like, oh, this album's nearly done. We just need to finish that song and maybe one more. And you, you find yourself perpetually in that state. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it turned out, we thought the album only needed a bit more, but it turned out it needed a lot more and it took yeah. longer than expected, especially because of COVID made it harder yeah. to collaborate, get in the same room to, you know, find new experience, yeah, all sure. those things. So, um, yeah, we had to change our working methods. We used a lot of Zoom, did a lot of things over Zoom. Um, you know, things would bounce between multiple, multiple computers around the world. Yeah, um, yeah. But we got it done, that's, you know, and we're, we're very lucky to be able to release music now yeah. and be working, you know, it's- Exactly. And yeah. I think it's such like a, it's such like a joyous and um, like fun album. So I think it's coming out like the perfect time, obviously when everyone's well, I guess about to come out of lockdown actually. So hopefully we'll be able to get to some live shows. Yeah. You'd mentioned the visuals earlier and you guys like absolutely killed it with the visuals again, this album cycle. How important do you guys think the visuals are when it comes to creating like the realm and identity of divine intervention? Yeah, I mean, we've always been a multi-sensory experience. You know, that's what we use. So hopefully, you know, you can see our show, you can see our video, you can see our photo and it will draw you in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it, the example I gave of Elevator Up is a good one. It recontextualizes that song with its music video around the concept of, of divine intervention. It wasn't written in that way, but it, it so happens that it fits. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we look before we hear, you know. We like to think that we, we, you know, we just can listen, you know, without distraction. But, you know, the context of what you, of where and how you listen to music is so important. If you listen to your uh, song with friends in a nice space, that will create great memories that are associated with that music forever. I, I listen in colors as well. And like, yeah. you know, I try to get the different colors on the album. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's always been so core to Client Liaison because there's a layered meaning there and there's a performance element and there's a story. Yeah, no, for sure. And so how across it are you guys when it comes to like conceptualizing? Do you guys come up with like every single detail or do you guys have a team that you work with? Uh, we're across every detail and yeah, we, we uh, like in terms of our clips and our shoots and things like that. Yeah, so um, we like collaborating. Um, I mean, at the start we were making our own music videos. Uh, we were using VHS cameras and, um, you know, but we've, we've always loved collaborating as well. Um, and a lot of that is um, collaborating on ideas, you know, kind of that writer's room style. Of, yeah. you know, bring one idea to the table and everyone throws things in and you keep turning it around and then you go, okay, that's great. But then you go in again and make the idea better, make the idea better and better and better. Cause like, yeah, you've just got to keep, keep throwing in more references and putting things together that you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, lately we've been working with um, Dan Hume's brother, Pete Hume on a lot of our videos and he's an amazing director. He's so agile and um, he can work within a you know, short time frame, short budget and get amazing things done. But it's the whole, the whole way throughout the process, it's creative, you know, on the shoot, things will change last minute. Yeah, and so which has been like your favorite visual surrounding the album so far? Oh, I, I would say, I mean, we just finished a music video yesterday. So I'm, I'm most excited about that. It's yeah. always the new thing, you know, so yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, like there was a whole world that, you know, there's many plans that have been thwarted mm -hmm. you know, in the last couple of years. So there was a whole world around House of Holy, for example, that we didn't get to see through, but um, I'm really excited for, um, we've got a clip coming for Strictly Business. So I'm really excited 
to pull that yeah. together. Awesome. And so you guys also announced the NFTs today. First, like whose idea was it to sell client liaison soul? Um, I, I think it came from Harvey. It was yeah. like, okay, wait, well, we can't do this, we can't do that. Well, I'll sell, I'll, I'll sell my soul. And then it was like, hey, why not? Let's sell our soul. And we've been talking about NFTs and mm -hmm. you know, they, they, you know, a lot, there's a lot of talk about them now, but they're almost immediately passe. And so we thought, oh, let's let's like make this fun. Mm -hmm. Let's um, comment on the intangibility of NFTs by selling something intangible, our soul, yeah. and give our fans an opportunity to buy a piece of us. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's so awesome. I think it's one of the more um, like creative NFTs as well. And yeah, I'm sure there'll be massive lines to buy your soul <laughs> <laughs> hopefully or maybe they won't you know <laughs> i i mean like i was looking at the prices and like it's pretty affordable so it's good yeah stuff. that's the idea yeah, yeah we're not like we're not we're not in it to make money yeah um yeah we're, we're more after the noise and um having some fun and yeah yeah buying in the concept of the album yeah yeah, definitely. Because I mean, so many people do kind of jump on NFTs, like just to kind of like make money. Oh yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> space. It's very, yeah. I mean, because it's connected to the art world and the art world is, yeah, got an incredible price tag at the top. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a collectible. So, but hopefully, you know, it might shift the music world into yeah. the realm as well. Um, the yeah. music world is way more diplomatic and mm -hmm. open, you know, and, and you you can't get away with murder. And so if Divine Intervention was a piece of pre-existing art, so like a painting, sculpture, photograph, anything, uh, what artwork do you think would sum it up perfectly, excluding any of your own visuals surrounding the record? I love architecture. Mm -hmm. um, I know Harvey does too. So maybe a building? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, building a Divine Intervention building. Yeah. Um, really fun with different rooms and um, yeah. different experiences. And so which three songs off the record would you pick to play to someone who had like never heard a client liaison song to make them like an instant diehard fan? <laughs> uh, the Real Thing. Because mm -hmm. um, that's, I think that's the most contagious song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, it, and it sets the tone, you know, because uh, yeah. We, 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 I've seen people misinterpret us, you know. Sometimes it takes them to see a video or a live show to, to, to get mm -hmm. flipped up in it and see that there's layered meaning to it. Not take it, not take, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. But the real thing, um, strictly business, because uh, that's really fun. And um, eulogy for the living, because that is the, the most serious point of the album. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, back point. Yeah. And so are there any kind of like lines from the album that you'll find get stuck in your head? Like you're just walking around and some one little line eating away at you? Yeah, I mean, because we've been setting up this NFT, selling our soul, I found all the lines that um, that chip away at my soul. Um, it's all those late nights working that chip away at my soul. I keep saying that because we've been working so hard and we're selling our soul. And then there's also a line in Eulogy for the Living, um, sell your soul for cheap emotions, but who will love you when you're gone? Yeah. So those two are the kind of latest, but yeah. Yeah, awesome. And so what things in life are divine to you? Oh, good question. What things in life are divine? Um, it's a uh, community and connection. Um, also standing up for what you believe in mm -hmm. um, and not caring about what other people think. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that's very important for creativity and creation. Creation is the ultimate divinity, really. Creation is, creation is so divine and music is so divine. So, yeah but um yeah and, and you know connect you know music and visuals being connected together getting swept up and you know into that world but also performance mm -hmm. very divine yeah. yeah and so was there any kind of like divine intervention that happened while you guys were creating the record you know like a dream someone appearing to you well during um the recording when we, we went to la to work with nick littlemore mm -hmm. um we wrote part of Elevator Up in Sydney and then we went to LA and said, let's do some more songs. And uh, we got a tour of the studio of Sunset Sounds in LA and um, they took us upstairs and they said, it's haunted. 
All right. It's very creepy up there. It's a kind of rundown motel yeah. above Studio Three, which was uh, Prince's favorite studio. And um, yeah, there were some crazy noises. Wow. The, and and a sudden chill just came across the room. And we just went, did you hear that? And we're like, yeah. And it's like suddenly cold in here. Wow. We're like, well, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, after hearing all the other stories, the ghost stories there, we came back downstairs and it, I can't remember exactly what happened, but at the end of the day, we had a song called House of Holy. And I remember just writing that song, looking upwards, consistently looking upwards. Um, but, you know, we take, we take these things lightly. You know, we're not, we're not, believers of any particular faith necessarily um but you know we, we'll, we'll let the moment let the moment take us and i think that happened and we wrote a house of holy and and after we wrote house of holy we then you know took a look around and there were a bunch of songs that fit within that theme and then we wrote some more so i guess that was a fairly divine turning point that's actually so awesome. And so are there any kind of songs that didn't make the album that you think might have a life in the future or are they kind of a way in a draw for life? Uh, potentially. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of unfinished ones that could just completely get changed. You might yeah. take the beat, you might take the vocal, you know, there's yeah, yeah. You know, like just here, like just, you know, that's all full of yeah. lyrics, for example. That's just one, that's just at this desk. So yeah, you always reinterpret um the old to make the new and um for both of both of our albums we um we started with old songs yeah right i'm also with diplomatic immunity hotel stay in canberra won't be calling tonight were already written and produced and we knew that they were great songs and so from them we we created the theme of diplomatic immunity and travel um in this case we had a bunch of songs that we wrote in byron so who knows but uh, it's been a long journey so and the world's gone through a lot of change so we might take a break for a little bit and do some touring and see what happens speaking of you guys had to uh cancel uh, the tour which sucks but you are going to be taking the stage in melbourne which will be fun at the far uh, unfortunately not that can't happen oh no yeah yeah, it hasn't been a, we've, we've got a live stream show instead. Uh, okay, cool. So yeah, we're just waiting for all the, you know, back end to work so that anyone who had those tickets can see a live stream instead, or if anyone else does want to, it's uh, on uh, this Saturday. So um, it's like a ticketed live stream, but yeah. Awesome. No tour, sadly. <laughs> yeah. What can audiences expect from the live stream? Oh, it was very rushed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very rough around the edges, which is good. You know, yeah. we don't want it to be too clean. No. But um, we found an awesome studio that spins. Sick. Yeah, so like you create this parallax movement. So we've got columns in the front and then us moving and then the camera oh. moving. It's got these different movements. Yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, yeah. It's sick, can't wait to see it. Yeah. Um, so obviously like the past 18 months have taken its toll worldwide, music industry, and in particular the touring sector. And also for you guys, like making that in-person connection with your audience who resonate with your music. Like how important do you think that live music is not only for yourself showcasing your art, but also for those audience members? I used to think it was essential, but we can live without it. I don't know for how long. I don't know if we can survive without it forever uh, in the way the music industry is set up right now. But um, it's been fundamental to client liaison. Yeah. Uh, we would we, we probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for our friends forcing us to play at their house parties, which would mean we'd finish our songs and then they'd, we'd get a good reaction and go, okay, well, let's get it out there. Um, and then, yeah, well, we've always road tested our material, connected to our fans. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're, we're so lucky right now that we can work, release an album, do some merchandise um, and keep going and... We can get back into the studio now if we want instead of touring so I, I don't know i'm just trying to see the positive in things yeah but i know uh, people out there are doing it really tough mm -hmm. yeah and yeah it's it's been very hard especially yeah. crew yeah people that depend solely on live music exactly yeah and it's decimated our industry there's been a lot of people that have left australia yeah a lot of musicians have left to and seek opportunity elsewhere Prince. Oh, 
God. Uh, let me think. I'm trying to think. Darren Hayes. The Rainbow Children by Prince. Holy Mountain. Miley Cyrus. Something by Simon and Garfunkel. John Farnham. Uh, Prince. Piano and a microphone. Spice Girl. Oh, Fruity Spice. Splendor in the Grass with Tina Arena. Oh, that's a good question. Enya? Uh, Chromio. In Australia or the world? Ah, uh, world. Prince. Australia as well. Most influence on the music industry in Australia. Oh, oh this too. It's, I can't. I can't. I, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, oh, good. Love it. In oh, excess. In excess. Yeah. No expectations. Grade six Canberra camp. Uh, leading Heidi Heidi Ho. Um, down a dark mountain. Yeah, love it. <laughs> so awesome. Did you guys go to like the Questacon, the usual year six camp? Yeah, we did the usual thing. And the, I, I just, I can't remember how, but we had this big fire towards yeah. the end. We all had a fire and we like sang songs or something. And then the whole school had to walk down this long path down a hill and it was pitch black. And I led the whole school in Heidi Heidi Ho. Thanks so much for your time today. And again, congratulations on the album. It's so good. Hopefully we'll see you guys on tour sometime in the next 70,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for the chat.